Uh, in Islam, there is something called the prohibition of taswir. Uh, taswir is a sculpture and that which is uh, a portrait that is made and imagery. Generally, it has a shape or a form. Uh, when it comes to photography, there was no word in the Arabic language to describe it. They used the word taswir, just like they used the word sayyara, which refers to a caravan of animals to refer to a motor vehicle when they didn't have a word to describe the car. So when you say Sayyara in the Quran, it's not referring to a car, it's referring to a car meaning. The same applies to the term Taswir. When you have a mirror uh, image, uh, when you look into the mirror and you can freeze that image, you're not competing with Allah and the creation of Allah, nor have you created something. It's a photograph. It's done by an apparatus. It's a, a, a mirror image that's frozen. Uh, you can keep it for memory, you can keep it for whatever other reason, you can actually put it up, uh, you know, on condition that, when I say put it up, not hang it up and so on, but at least on the internet, it's a digital image. And even if it was a printed image, printed meaning a photograph, there are two opinions. The one opinion that is the diminishing opinion that has now realized that Taswir does not refer to photography of today, but rather it goes back to imagery and portraits and that which is... Uh, uh, that which is connected to uh, idolatry and the idols and the sculptures and so on, uh, but not the, the image, the, the captured image. For as long as you can see it with your eyes, and you're allowed to see it with your eyes, you can take a picture of it or a video of it. Remember that. So, uh, you know, uh, there is a permissibility, and I think a growing number of scholars have said that. The most, the, most, the silliest thing that I find is, you have a scholar taking a picture, you have, uh, for example, uh, someone who has a bit of knowledge who, is, uh, who has put up this post, and the people at the bottom sometimes are uh, saying, is it permissible? I mean, come on, if it wasn't, it wouldn't be there, you know. And if there are two opinions, I definitely respect the stricter opinion, but I disagree with it. I respect the stricter opinion that says, look, it's totally forbidden, but they too follow this ruling when they need to do things. Some said that the most severely punished people on the day of judgment are those who draw or take pictures so they differ is photography part of this hadith or not and the most authentic opinion inshallah is that taking pictures for photography is permissible but not recommended but it is permissible and if you take for example for example uh, <clears throat> pictures and photographs of your holidays, of sightseeing, of nice scenery, this is permissible. If you want to take photos of men, of boys, of children, this is again permissible. What is not permissible is to keep photographs of dead people, your father, your grandfather, your uncle, your loved one. This is completely forbidden to keep these photographs, you have to destroy them. And the second is to take pictures of women or of grown-up girls. You cannot take the photograph of your 13 or 14 years old uh, daughter or sister because this is a awra that has to be covered. And by taking her picture, even if you store it in your memory card or in your hard disk drive or in your camera claiming that no one else would see it, people will hack your uh, uh, machine and will, will get these photographs without your permission or knowledge. And if you sell your laptop or your desktop, you format it, people can still get every single detail on it. Pictures. Photography in Arabic is known as taswir. Basad, taswir. It means that 
the taking of pictures back with me back with me photography means the taking of pictures of living animate moving beings animated beings like people animals and birds like people animals and birds etc the ruling is that it is forbidden on the basis of reports such as the following report number one Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu arda reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said ashaddu nasi athaban yawm al qiyamah al musawwirun the hadith is in Bukhari the most severely punished people on the day of resurrection are the image makers the most listen now some people think I'm playing or they all oh, know but 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 stop your butts right now listen to the hadith so you will know we're not playing games here the most severely punished people on the day of resurrection are the image makers and the image makers as we will explain are those who sculpture a statue are those who draw an image and you know cartoon like and the cartoon well, there's a further explanation for it but let's say at school the school says your son has to draw a monkey or a lion or an elephant or his father and you draw with the features eyes nose mouth and camera pictures whether it's on your phone or on a digital camera or whatever if it's going to snap and keep a pause of you a, 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 you know a moving a picture that is not moving this is included Ibn Abbas reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said every image maker will be in the fire every image maker will be in the fire and for every image that he made a soul will be created for him which will be which he will be punished with in the fire for every image he made every picture he snapped there will be a soul created and that soul will punish him in the fire so if someone took so many pictures then you will have a lot of things to deal with on Yawm Al-Qiyamah in Jahannam. Ibn Abbas said in commenting on his hadith, if you must do that, because he said this to someone, and this person's jaw dropped, because this was his source of living. He told him, yeah, Ibn Abbas, this is how I will make a living by drawing pictures. He told him, if you must do that, make pictures of trees and other inanimate objects. Sun, moon, flowers, house, rivers, mountains. You want to show us your artistic you know, skills, Go ahead, but leave soul-possessing beings alone. Leave animals and leave birds and leave human beings. Ibn Abbas said, if you must draw something, then let it be the trees and the plants and nature in general, not including the animal kingdom and that of human beings. These hadith indicate that pictures of animate beings are haram whether they are, are humans or other creatures, whether they are three-dimensional or two-dimensional, whether they are printed, drawn, uh, engraved, carved, cast in molds, etc. These ahadith include all of these types of pictures. The Muslim should submit to the teachings of Islam and not argue with them by saying, but I'm not worshipping them or prostrating to them because that's one of the ilal that the people of Nuh made these idols into gods and they worship them. Say, I'm only taking a picture of my grandfather. I'm not going to worship him. I'm not going to make sujood for him. If we think about one aspect, only one aspect of the evil caused by the prevalence of uh, photographs and pictures in our times, we understand the wisdom behind this prohibition, especially the aspect of the great corruption ca caused by provoking physical desires and subsequent spread of immorality caused by these pictures. The world of pornography, whether it is via video or pictures, the, there's a whole world of corruption based on this concept. Child abuse, child pornography, you know them. In the world they exist today. Sisters in Islam posing and taking pictures of, them, of themselves which they supposedly share with their friends and you don't know what people do on the other side of the door let alone in their own home and their own privacy in their own you don't know what and don't think there are angels walking around among the Muslims they are human beings prone to sin prone to desires inclined to temptation this is if this was only the only negative aspect that would be enough 
but I'm gonna continue. The, now, let's leave alone the actual taking of the images. The Muslim should not keep any pictures of animated beings in his house because this will prevent angels from entering the house. The Prophet وسلم, said, لا تدخل الملائكة بيتا فيه صورة أو كلب. The angels do not enter a house in which there's a dog or pictures. And the ulama say, لا خير في بيت لا ملائكة فيه. There's no goodness in a house in which angels are not present. And when the angels leave, who will come in substitution? Shayateen. And when the shayateen are home, then it will يأزو الناس للمعاصي أزا. They will incite the people to disobedience. They will cause the family to disobey amongst the family members or on individual basis. It will actually keep the angels out. The shayateen will come and all kinds of problems will result from that. I don't know if any Muslim can afford to say, I don't need the angels in my house. The angels are, are they seek forgiveness for the believer. They protect the believer. They, they play major roles in the life of a Muslim that we cannot undermine. Just because we don't see them, it doesn't mean they don't exist. If you have a picture in your home, no angels for you. Now, the pictures which are present in a book, which you cannot avoid, like encyclopedias. If you were to take that, you know, the 18 volumes and try to blot out the pictures, you will never end. This is excused because of necessity. But we're speaking about precisely pictures for memory, whether they are hung on the wall or they are in the albums, it makes no difference. Once you have pictures of yourself when you were five and six and 10 and family members, all this is included. You say, but your brother, you know, life, man, come on, you're such an extremist. You're going to tell me I'm going to throw away my pictures of my childhood? Yes. Yes. Throw them away. Rip them up. Burn them up. Big deal. Were you created to look at yourself when you were five and have a good time? Don't you think people lived before you for millions of years and they survived without having photo albums of their families? They survived. Have you ever heard of someone dying? He died. Why? He didn't have a family album. No photo for him. The, the pain and the agony overcame him. He died of sadness. Never. People survive. You will survive. And maybe you were not even that cute. So I don't know what kind of picture you keep. But maybe every time you look at yourself, you get scared. Get rid of the pictures, yes, Sheikh. Throw them away. Let the angels enter the house. You don't need them. We don't need them. Now, if you took a picture for some evidence, proof, for example, wedding pictures in some of the countries for you to actually get an official marriage contract, you need to present, you know, evidence that you actually did a nikah or wedding. Something that is excused in this fashion is, is exempt from this. We're sp speaking about for memory purposes, let alone the picture which someone's daughter took when she graduated from university, which she puts in his majlis. So every time guests come over, say, Masha Allah, Tabarak Allah. This beautiful 18-year-old daughter is yours? Oh yes, brother, mashallah, she's a doctor now. Listen. Did you hear what he said? He just flirted with your daughter. He called her beautiful 18, or even if he didn't say that. Are you gonna let a man look at your daughter? Oh, mashallah, very nice, very nice. And then brother father, yes, yes, alhamdulillah, I have four of them. Let me get you the other pictures of the three. No, 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 malish. Sit down, ya Sheikh. Mashi halak, huh? Leave these pictures in the back. Hanging the picture is out of the question. Way no, no way to have a picture hanging in your wall. This is super danger. In the album, also not allowed. Things that are a necessity are a necessity. One of the ilal, one of the reasons behind the prohibition of taswir is the fact that you are you are trying to take on the quality of taswir. Who is the musawwir? Who is the musawwir? Allah. You don't know, you don't have Surah Al-Hashr memorized? What does it say at the end? Who Allah al-Khaliq al-Bari al-Musawwir. Sawwarakum fil arham. More than one ayah. The one who fashions, who gives images, who formulates human beings is Allah. And when someone grabs a pen and he draws, he's doing that which Allah does. He's playing the role of Allah. He's taking the quality, a sifa, 
Sifatul Taswir, which belongs to Allah alone, you don't have the right to do it. So one of the one of the reasons behind the prohibition is that you are resembling Allah in that quality. So the one who takes pictures of the camera says, but I'm not drawing. I'm only snapping a button. It's taking the picture, that's not the same. The Shaykh said, this is even more haram. Because when I take a picture of you, when I draw you, am I gonna be 100% accurate? I may miss something. It may not be as close to the real deal than the picture, which is exactly you. Exactly you. He said, it's even more haram. Pictures with the camera are even more haram than the ones that you draw. And that's fiqh. That's fiqh and that's dangerous for us.